Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh God, oh God, have mercy. For we know you are gracious to all those who have gone astray, to all those who have gone astray. Well, I'm going to do something I never thought I'd do today. That is confess a sin in front of the whole congregation of our Lord. I must admit that I have lost the battle this Lent. And I've come to understand my true self. I am a man, I am a man, I am a man who needs direction. That's right. When I am lost, trying to figure out where I'm going, and my wife says, Andy, we should stop and ask for directions, I have never stopped and asked for directions, but today I am telling you that I need directions. I'm admitting it. I'm sorry. Guys, you don't have to admit it. Go ahead, just live in your own world, so I'm just admitting my problem. I'm sure nobody else in this room has such a problem as this. But I am grateful, and maybe it is not for my wife, but for GPS, and (laughs) the fact that Waze allows me never to have to ask for directions, ever in my life. So you you see, I have had to live over these many years with GPS that shows me the sin is in me without repentance, but today I've decided to do so. On June 7th, 1862, Emily Dickinson wrote to a then very popular and published poet, now completely unknown, Colonel Thomas Higginson, and asked for some advice. Well, let me just say that Mr. Higginson didn't understand what she was all about and didn't really think much of her poetry and so wrote her back a a rather polite, demeaning, I know everything kind of a letter. And she wrote back to Mr. Higginson, the sailor cannot see the north, but knows that the needle can. Dickinson's reply appears in the context of that letter, for in herself she knew what was true and good and life-giving within her own work. She had a sense of direction, a sense of offering herself through these words and offering a faith in a God that she believed in beyond anybody else's understanding. And for me, that is a very powerful, powerful statement. Perhaps, in fact, we might suggest that what Dickinson has tapped into connects to an off-reference piece of from, from St. Augustine of Hippo that might be sum, summarized something like this. We are built as human beings with a vacuum in our hearts that only God can fill. You might wonder if maybe in the confessions where we find such a quote as this, Augustine is thinking actually of the scripture from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. God has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. We are too easily lost, you see, as human beings in believing that this life of following Jesus and worshiping God through the power of the Spirit is easy or perhaps not a necessary part of our spiritual journey, that we can go our own way. Yet the horrors of the world nag at us and remind us that not all is well with us, that actually maybe, as the Scripture says, a physician cannot heal itself. 
oneself, that there is a depth necessary to life and particularly to Christianity, one that helps us understand that our mind and our body are actually meant for the undertaking of the work of God in this world, in God's creation. In Lent, we recenter our faith on Christ. We consider the trusting of the Holy Spirit as our needle versus ourselves. We humbly admit we are lost without God in Christ Jesus. We learn that our minds and our bodies are too easily fooled into seeing a faux spiritual north. It's almost as if our lives are like a magnet, our bodies and our minds are like a magnet that we set next to the compass. So it appears the compass is pointing in the right direction, but it is not. And thinking that way of the world, we understand it is our north and we redirect our vision. In believing that wealth or success are the true north, Or worse, believing that at last and in the last day, those things will matter more than family, more than love, more than friends, more than having spent a life of doing good. It isn't just that you can't take it with you. It is actually the lostness of believing that it buys you something else in the world to come, which it does not. If the streets of heaven, if they are paved with gold, it is gold of spiritual wealth that is refined through sharing what we have, doing good work, loving each other, and following the God of love. Now, I will tell you, we also get lost because we too easily trust and believe our mind rules our feelings. This is part of the brokenness of our human bodies. It is biologically and chemically a reality that we are ruled actually by our feelings. Reason is like a rider on the elephant of feelings. But that's not what you think, is it? See, you are tricked into believing that your mind knows best. We believe what we know and think is true. And yet all it is is a bodily reaction to the world around us. Getting what we emotionally need often leads to feeding our own appetites. Here, emotional desires become primary and we become misdirected. We too easily believe our disordered lives are ordered and that life without deep faith is truth. We believe that we can see the horizon. We believe the reality we experience. We become the center of the universe of which God plays a part. We are deceived, as the scripture says, and do not know the sin that is in us. We too quickly depart from religious life. The compass of the human mind and body takes over. It's maybe more likely that religious life humbles us because it requires that we admit that we are sinful and that we are lost and that we need help. And the kind of help we need is only the kind of help that an almighty God which I don't think we take seriously, an almighty God and a savior can help us with. As my chiropractor likes to say, when I walk in after a road trip of a couple of weeks, one hip two inches lower than the other, Bishop, there's a hitch in your giddy up. It's no wonder you're going in circles. I am so often going in spiritual life circles, repeating over and over again my mind and body's false direction. 
But hey, I've got a program for you. It's called Lent. The good news is it only lasts a couple of weeks. For Episcopalians, that's about all we can do. <laughs> but it does help us to reorder our lives. It helps us to say, hey, I am going to return to church. I am going to spend a few weeks trying to figure out how this life actually works. How am I a part of this world and what is my responsibility? For we fool ourselves, as Leslie Newbegin says, if we believe that our salvation does not impede on upon our desires and our responsibility for how our world works. The regular routines of worship help us go deeper and find that we are not the first pilgrims on this journey to be lost. Part of what we learn and understand is that worship and prayer life interrupts the cycle and circle of our hitch in our giddy up. Conversations remind us and pull us towards God, our true spiritual north. Lent is a time when we are able to reconnect to our compass, who is God and has made us, who has redeemed us, and who has given us a way and a path to follow. It is our opportunity to rehearse a spiritual altar call that reminds us that God is God and we are yet but human. And the ashes we bear on our foreheads remind us our bodies and minds will be laid in the grave and our only Savior is Jesus Christ who will come as he did on that Saturday, that holy Saturday, and reach out and lift us into God's community. So, in my visitation, I say, kneel before the Lord. <laughs> Bow your head in humility. Find your true self, for only in admitting who we are and that we are lost will we discover the truth of the Savior that redeems us and gives us life eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.